How old is this one? About uh, 1910, 1900, 1910, about the same age. The label 1879 is false. <laughs> Of course, what you see oh. inside, that's a whole different world. Look at the way that the inner structure, the corners, the blocks, the linings are made. It's perfection, beauty, but still handwork, because machines can do that too perfectly. But this is not machine work, this is handwork. Oh, the symbiotic energy that's between the instrument and the the player. Mm -hmm. It's always a factor. There's a relationship there. Yeah. It's like the, the great professor, uh, now deceased, uh, Laurent Fenga, she had a beautiful Stradivarius. The Strad he had said, my violin is a somebody. It's not a thing. It's a somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's his whole life. He always had that instrument, was attached to him. Many of the great artists you know, almost are inseparable from their, from their instruments. Mm -hmm. If you play a player who's constantly playing out of tune, the violin or the instrument after a very short time, you give it to someone else, it'll be out of tune. It'll play out of tune even in the hands of a great violinist. It'll take years again until that violin can be taught to play in tune again. It's a fact. And these things are uh, demonstrating exactly how uh, one is a part of the other. The wood resonates, vibrates, it feels. It's a living, breathing substance, and, and it feels. The handmade instruments uh, gives you the personality on some level of the maker. The handmade instruments are able to give you back the e emotions uh, of, the, of the makers in a way they, uh, they're able to uh, finish the instrument, able to present the instrument. On, on the mass production instrument, simply you cannot feel the, the personality of the instrument. Yeah. Because every, every instrument has a all the instruments, they all have personalities. They, they sound a unique way, you, you cannot really uh, compare it to any, anything else. Especially you can hear it from, from uh, mu musicians who played on many different mm -hmm. uh, old instruments and they can really tell, uh, as, as a player, as an artist, they can really tell, tell how different they can sound. Well, I guess I see my instrument as the vehicle through which to experience the music, and that's all about what's been written and how I interpret it. So I actually don't give the instrument so much credit in that area. <laughs> I mean, it's very important as the vehicle and, and the tool, and it definitely changes how I feel about interpreting things and all my options. So in that sense, it's very important, but it's all a means to an end, which is the music. I have this theory, which I just sort of baked the other day, which is that, because um, we're talking about fine instruments a lot, right? You know, why did I spend a lot of time going to a competition to carry around this beautiful instrument that is worth X amount of dollars, which causes me a little bit of an inconvenience in my life, um, when I had a cello? You know, I had a cello, it was pretty fine, made some noise, so what's the deal? I could, I could just keep that, right? And the answer I really think is not, you would expect it because it sounds so much more amazing than every other instrument out there and that it's like the audience is going to respond to it in a completely different way and that it's altering and all that. And that might be true of maybe a few instruments for some audience members, but 
I don't think that's really the thing. I think we've gotten to a level in our playing in which we want to hear certain sounds and so these instruments are sort of the only instruments that are capable of making those sounds but they're but they're very very subtle differences actually it's differences that most people i don't think care about and if you play in an incredibly convincing way don't matter so it's really just about how important it is to me. It's an incredibly selfish thing. <laughs> it's that I want these sounds to be that beautiful. This instrument makes it a lot easier, if not just possible, for me to make those sounds. And that does in turn affect my interpretation and therefore how the audience is responding to it, but not in a pure sound, oh my god that sounds like a different instrument way, more just like there's something stronger about that interpretation that I'm sensing and I probably can't even put into words. I think for me, the biggest influence on my general cello technique was my first teacher. And that's simply because I was five years old. So you do what you're told, and more than that, you mimic what you see. Um, so I'm, I'll be grateful to her forever, because she was one of the very few teachers who had just a very healthy setup. So when I mimicked her, I wasn't like putting in too many bad habits that would encourage injuries later on, which is so common, so common. So that's baby number one about technique. And then we have a lot of other influences. I mean, it's, it's kind of a small genre, so we hear a lot of the same recordings. People are always complaining about how everyone's starting to sound the same and stuff. And there's like, four style camps that people fall into mm -hmm. and you know so you're sort of battling all that but what I find interesting is that despite all that people do end up having their own voices I find and I think that's kind of the magic of music it's like this internal creativity that you're just you're working on and just like we intonate differently when we speak that's what mm -hmm. happens on our instruments